One concept of interdependence is a proximity concept. We are in the same space. We rub against each other. We are in some fashion linked and locked together. Yes. That's a proximity concept. Mm -hmm. But it's a deeper normative concept, which is suggestive of equity, of equilibrium in the relationship, of neighborliness, of, in a word, solidarity. The proximity concept is today a reality when we speak of interdependence. With regard to the normative concept, this remains, as Tavis said, an aspiration. So it's important, I think, to keep that in mind, at least with regard to the remarks which I'm about to make. The second thing I want to say is that uh, I'll concentrate my remarks on the movement of people and the implications of that. The push factors which define and animate the movement of people remain roughly the same. People seeking better opportunities elsewhere for themselves and for their children, looking for greener pastures, if you like. It's uh, people escaping conflict and war. It's escaping degradation of their physical environment, which can no longer sustain them, and they must look for a better, more sustainable, hospitable environment elsewhere. And of course, from age old times, the opportunity to reinvent themselves to escape from the prejudice that marks their last name, their faith, their ethnicity, and immigration was a way to reinvent and overcome those uh, traditions of uh, prejudice. These factors are global, and they are enduring. What is equally uh, uh, clear is that we have not yet developed, in spite of the global nature of these factors, this phenomenon, we have not yet developed an international framework of response and dialogue on this phenomenon. And we have not yet developed with that a long-term perspective on this. In many of the countries where these are issues, one typically sees, as both uh, Ben and Tavis referred to earlier, very short-term and very parochial and very immediate politically uh, driven responses, not long-term visions as to how best to, to tackle this. So that's one challenge over this issue. A second challenge which I put to you is that whereas we've been very conscious in topical contemporary times about the difficulties of recipient societies and countries receiving new communities in their midst, how to regulate, how to make legal, how to absorb, and how to integrate, we've not been as conscious about the cost and benefit to countries and societies of origins. To give you just a sense of this, when in the country in which I live today, the United States, when so many nurses and doctors up from Africa, from Asia, from the Philippines, and they come to the US, there are costs and there are benefits to that. And we need to look a little more carefully with regard to this. The third question I leave with you is about uh, if interdependence is still at the present moment a proximity concept. It means therefore that it is basically about center periphery, to use an old term, but not so old, it's still a relevant term, center periphery relationship. And how do we work on the process we are describing in order to make this relationship one which is informed with more equity, more balance, and more neighborliness. 
and less of a center periphery phenomenon. The fourth question which occurs to me is the issue of integration. I give you two examples. In France and Britain, there are people who are born there. They are French citizens. They are British citizens. But they do not feel a deep sense of belonging. They know no other country, but they don't feel a deep sense of belonging in the land of their birth. Is the issue of integration, the problematic of integration. A successful integration produces one result. Alienation in the land of your birth produces a different result. And so one of the challenges we face is how to address more successfully the challenge of integration and identity in the context of immigration and the movements of people. And one can contrast the example of Europe, for example, with that of the United States. And in that context, too, I believe that we are looking increasingly at a multi-dimensional identity, at the very least dual identity. The country in which I live, the US, I've looked around, and it's very difficult to find plain Americans. I go and I encounter Irish Americans, Polish Americans, Indian Americans, very few plain Americans. Part of the genius of the US, a country which has many problems, but certainly part of its genius is that they seem to feel at home. They seem to feel at ease under their skin with this duality of identity. Many societies have not been able to uh, tackle this in quite a successful manner. So the issue of of integration, identity, and the multiple dimensions of identity is part of the challenge that we have to face. And then comes the question of community of ideas, of culture, of the arts, of the creative expressions. When we have such intensive movements of people up and down, does this create space for more diversity, for celebration of more ideas and multiplicity of culture, or does it stifle this? And again, I know in later sessions we shall be discussing this, but I think it's a very important issue that has to be uh, addressed. And finally, we are meeting at uh, Tech Monterey, and we have so many young people. I believe that one of the biggest tragedies that is uh, marking our era is the incredible lack of investment in young people, in the youth. Our lip service, official or otherwise, lip service notwithstanding. Because without investing in the development and the education of youth, and movement across borders of young people, the most natural interactions among young people. The friendship which are formed are formed the most natural, effortless way 